Hello? Is this scooter that what wood? Uh... Well, my scooter will not start. And I do not know where to begin. Well, I can probably help you figure it out. I just need you to answer three questions. Three questions? I don't think I can do that. Now today, I'm gonna to be demonstrating how to troubleshoot a no start using this Genuine Buddy 150. Now even though I'm using a specific scooter to demonstrate, the concepts in this video should be able to be applied to almost any scooter. Now before we get to ripping and a tearing, we need to discuss a little bit of engine theory. Now your engine needs three basic things to run. It needs a charge of fuel and air, it needs an ignition source, and it needs compression. Now the charge of fuel and air is supplied by your scooter's carburetor. Now a carburetor is a mechanical device that mixes a precise amount of fuel with a precise amount of air. This is called your fuel to air ratio. If the ratio is way off, the engine won't run. If it's close, the engine might run or it might cough or sputter, but it won't run well. Compression is created when the piston travels in the cylinder. As the piston travels oh. upwards, it squeezes the charge of fuel and air against the cylinder head. Now compression loss can occur if your valves aren't seated correctly. This will allow the charge of fuel and air to enter the intake or the exhaust port prematurely. Compression loss can also occur if you have damaged cylinder walls, piston, or piston rings. Last, let's talk about your ignition source. Now this is supplied by your scooter's spark plug. The spark plug delivers a spark to the compressed charge of fuel and air at a very precise moment. This creates an explosion, forcing the piston back down in the cylinder and rotating the crankshaft. Now the benefit of this being arranged in a triangle is it makes it easy to diagnose your problem through the process of elimination. You can test each corner of the triangle to determine which one is the root cause of your problem. Now let's get down to the diagnosis. First of all, it's most important to be thorough with your tests and not jump to conclusions. Second of all, you need to keep in mind that your scooter can have multiple or even compounding issues. So if you get one issue solved, your scooter might not run 100% correctly again. You need to keep going and retesting until you get the result you're looking for. Now the first question you're going to need to answer is, does the scooter crank? Cranking is when the engine is turned over by the starter motor. And when your scooter is cranking, it makes this sound here. Now if your scooter is not making that sound when you press the engine start button, you're going to need to diagnose that first. And lucky for you, I've already created an electric start diagnostic video here. But what about my kickstart? Great question. Unless you're riding a vintage Vespa, your scooter's kickstart should be used in emergency situations only. You see, the kickstart mechanism on most scooters is not robust enough for daily use. And you may not be able to kick the engine over fast enough to generate enough current to start the engine. In this situation, it's always better to diagnose the electric start before going forward. Okay, so we've established that your scooter is cranking. So let's dive into the diagnostic triangle and answer the second question. Is your scooter getting a charge of fuel and air? Now, under perfect circumstances, your scooter's carburetor provides the engine with a precisely metered mixture of fuel and air. Now, the carburetor is a mechanical device with precision ports and orifices. And these ports and orifices can become clogged if the fuel inside the carburetor goes bad. And because a carburetor is basically an open container of gasoline, that's exactly what happens if your scooter sits for more than a few months. So, if your scooter was running great, then sat for a few months, and now it won't start, you're going to want to watch the next portion of this video pretty closely. If your carburetor is clogged, it's almost definitely not going to deliver enough fuel to the engine to allow it to run properly. 
So, we're going to create an experiment. We're going to use an external fuel source to see if lack of fuel is the reason this engine won't start. Now this is carburetor cleaner. And I prefer carburetor cleaner to starting fluid for one main reason. Starting fluid sometimes has additives that can cause rubber gaskets and o-rings to swell and distort. And if the rubber gaskets and o-rings swell inside of your carburetor, <laughs> it can render it pretty much useless. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my airbox cover off, puff a few squirts of carb cleaner in through the intake, and try and start the engine. On this genuine buddy, we're going to need to remove the air filter itself to expose the port that leads to the carburetor. Now, you don't have to pull it all the way off if you don't want to. You can kind of pick it up out of the way. And you can see this port here is the port that leads to the carburetor. So that's where I'm going to spray my carb cleaner. Now, you only need a few puffs. And we're going to crank the engine over. And there we have it. All right, so now we know the missing piece in this particular scooter was a charge of fuel and air. And even though I got to have the Victor Frankenstein moment of, it's alive! It doesn't mean that that's the only result that you need to pay attention to. You see, any signs of life at all, coughing, backfiring, even faster cranking, can be an important clue that you need to pay attention to. Now, some of you will notice after introducing an external fuel source, your scooter will start up and run just fine from here on out. And let me explain to you why that is. You see, if the fuel has gone bad in your carburetor's float bowl, it won't be potent enough to allow the engine to run. But once the engine's had a visit from uh, Puff the Magic Dragon here, it's going to actually burn some of that unpotent fuel along with your external fuel source. And once you've burned some of the fuel in the float bowl, it'll allow new fresh gas from the gas tank to enter the carburetor. And once you've run it long enough, all the old gas is gone and you're back on the road. So what can we infer from the results of our first test? Well, the engine ran, which means the missing piece of the puzzle was the charge of fuel and air. We can also infer that the scooter has spark because the engine ran, and an engine cannot run without spark. We can also infer that the scooter has compression because the engine ran, and you guessed it, an engine cannot run without compression. Now wait a minute, hold on and slow down a second. Now just because we know it has spark doesn't mean that it's the best spark. It might not be hot or consistent, and it might fail when the engine gets hot. Same with the compression. It might be enough compression to run, but maybe it won't be enough to get you up to the top of that hill. You see, scooters can have multiple and sometimes compounding issues, but you need to solve the biggest issues first. In this case, that is the carburetor. And lucky for you, I've created a step-by-step -step tutorial on servicing your scooter's carburetor here. Okay, so let's say that introducing an external fuel source did not yield any new results. That means we uh, gave it a little extra help, but the scooter did exactly the same thing. It cranked and cranked, it didn't uh, cough or pop or backfire or run in any short spurt or anything like that. So that leads us to question number three we need to answer, which is, does this scooter have spark? Now, as you may already know, the spark plug is the component that ignites the charge of fuel and air after it enters the engine. And lucky for you, it's pretty easy to observe. We'll start by gaining access to the spark plug. Now, you can either do this by removing the seat bucket or this front access panel here. Just do whatever works best for you and your scooter. Now we'll locate the spark plug on the right side of the cylinder head. The spark plug is going to be easily identifiable by this long, thick spark plug wire attached. To remove the plug wire, we're going to use a twisting motion while pulling away from the engine. Okay, with the plug wire removed, we're going to use our 5-8 socket and a ratchet to remove the spark plug.
There we have it. Now what we're going to do is insert the spark plug back into the spark plug boot. And we're going to visually observe the spark. Now visually observing the spark is going to require that the grounding strap, which is this little finger over the top of the spark plug, is firmly grounded against an engine ground. So you can either do it here against the valve cover or if you have a nice bolt somewhere, you can ground it anywhere where it's going to make fine contact. You want to hold firm pressure on it while you crank the engine. Now it's important that the spark plug is sparking, but it's also important that the spark plug is sparking consistently. We want it to be sparking every time the engine turns over. This is a great example of good spark. If your spark is weak or inconsistent, the first thing you should try is replacing your spark plug. And the only spark plug I can recommend for the GY6 platform is the NGK CR7 HSA. Now I'm not sponsored by NGK or any company for that matter. This is purely speaking from experience working as a professional motorcycle technician. If your spark plug is not sparking at all, that means you have an ignition system issue that you need to troubleshoot before going any further. And keep in mind, as I stated before, a scooter can have multiple issues or even compounding issues. So maybe the scooter was parked because it had an ignition system issue and then it sat so long that the carburetor clogged. Or vice versa. There's all kinds of problems. Just keep in mind that the journey might be a little longer than you expect, but it's always rewarding at the end. For more information on your scooter's ignition system, check out my video here. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm going to assume your scooter failed the external fuel source test, but passed the ignition test. From the results of these tests, we can infer that your engine will not run due to a lack of compression. Now as we discussed before, there are many reasons your engine can be experiencing low compression. It may just need a valve adjustment. But it may also be due to damaged or broken engine components. Now damaged and broken components may sound like a bad thing, but I like to think of them as opportunities for improvement. This may be the time to throw on that big bore kit you've been eyeing. Well, I hope by now you have a good idea of what's going on with your scooter and what you need to do next. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If it helped you out, or if you have an idea for a future episode of Scooter 911, please leave me a comment below. You know, I make these videos to empower people to take repairs into their own hands and to remind everyone that a scooter is just a bucket of bolts and the people who work on them aren't smarter than you. So until next time, Oh, that was unelegant. All right, so. I'll do that thing. okay. I want to be underneath the sea. Your scooter's kickstart, kickstart. What am I, Dutch? <laughs>